Bitcoin just closed its ninth red weekly candle in a row. But after that close on the new weekly open, we are starting to see a little bit of bullish speculation. And we're starting to see that on the four hour chart, Bitcoin is coming up and seemingly looking to break our resistance here. It's possible that now at the beginning of this week, we may begin to see what could be a bullish rebound to retest some resistance. In my last video, we discussed this potential scenario. Let's take a look at what I said. So at this point, seeing a multi-week reversal to retest some of these previous support zones as potential new resistance for the S&P seems like a strong possibility in my opinion. And so what does this mean for Bitcoin with this high degree of correlation? Well, it probably means that Bitcoin would also follow the S&P on some kind of multi-week reversal back to the upside. All right, so that is what we discussed in the last video. Now, since then, the S&P has begun to play out that bounce that we discussed that we were looking for. The interesting thing is that Bitcoin kind of lagged out, kind of didn't follow initially, but it's starting to look like, okay, maybe Bitcoin was just lagging behind and maybe we're about to start on this weekly, a little bit of a journey to the upside to follow that S&P rally. So as we were discussing, it's possible that Bitcoin may be looking to get a retest of this downward sloping resistance, right? And after that, it's possible, it's quite likely that we would see some rejection off that resistance. This is, in fact, a confirmed downtrend for Bitcoin. Lower lows, lower highs. And who really knows, you know, is it possible that Bitcoin could pump up and break resistance and just instantly recover? Yeah, but it's far less likely than Bitcoin coming up to retest prices like 37,000 before getting rejected by the downward sloping resistance, maybe even testing lower before breaking the downward sloping resistance towards the end of the year. Something along those lines is what I find to be most likely. But nonetheless, you know, a relief rally seems to be what would be considered standard market action, right? Bitcoin came up to this new 69K top dumped, rebound to resistance, dumped, rebound to resistance. Maybe we create a stronger, longer base of support later on before actually getting the recovery that we all want to see, right? That seems to be what's likely. One idea to support that this could be an area where we create a longer base of support, a longer term base of support is the weekly volume signature, the Coinbase weekly volume signature, which we've discussed here on this channel many times that most of these weekly volume signatures line up with major market tops and major market bottoms. And we did just see that once again for Bitcoin at this recent dip zone. Now, Bitcoin, you know, even though it could go up, we see short term bullish action. Again, we got to be mindful of the fact that we are in a downtrend and that it's more likely that we would be looking to create a larger base of support. At this point in time, looking at where Bitcoin is on the chart, looking at that 2021 low point, Bitcoin has barely even tested below. We have not explored this downside region yet, which makes me think that yes, this bottom with this weekly volume signature could be acting as a long, uh, long term base of support, or at least will act as strong support. Though what's more likely in my opinion is we retest that resistance, come down, test that low once again, or test that low, create a new, a lower low before you know, truly bottoming out here in this market. Bitcoin historically, you know, goes sideways at these bear market lows for months on end, right? It's unlikely and it's very uncommon in Bitcoin history. Actually, it's never happened that we had the halving, a major bull run, a dip with just a one month low with an instant recovery. Usually we're going sideways for half a year, a year, and then recovering. Over here in 2018, we had one, two, three, four, five, five or six months before we actually recovered out of that zone. And it's unlikely and it's unrealistic, I would say, to expect Bitcoin to essentially just have one month down and instantly recover, right? It's un, you know unrealistic to me for Bitcoin to just instantly recover. It's more likely that we come down here, maybe bounce up, retest the lows, create a longer base of support, and then recover going into the halving. Historically, classic Bitcoin action, right? But that is not a bad thing. That is not a bad thing, guys. Um, you know, these are areas of maximum opportunity. So you would almost pray 
that you get a few months at least, a few months to buy these low levels before we recover into the having. Something I said on Twitter earlier is that, you know, for my macro view, again, short term, short term guys, I do expect a retest of the downward sloping resistance followed by sideways action. But what I'm saying here in this tweet is that for the macro view, I expect majority sideways action within the next year with large swings throughout, right? Large swings, but ultimately no growth is what I mean. We have 1.5 years to prepare for the next Bitcoin halving. There's no rush necessarily, but it's always good to prepare and accumulate because time flies and we will be there before you know it. So even though it could be that we have, you know, six months of accumulation or, you know, who knows, maybe even a year before we really recover, um, you know, that, that, that is a significant amount of time, of course, to accumulate. But at the same time, as we know, time flies. And if we only have six months to a year to accumulate, you know, before we know it, we'll be there, right? Before we know it, we'll be looking at our calendars and we'll see that, wow, the, the having is less than half a year away, right? And by that time, you better be ready, you better be prepared, and you better have accumulated. So without, you know, even though I'm saying that, okay, you know, we come up, we could come lower again, go sideways, this is a good buy zone, ultimately. What I'm saying, though, is that it's not lower than where we were in 2021. That makes me think that we could be looking to explore a little bit lower later, right? Or at least just go sideways, an instant recovery to the moon is unlikely unless, of course, the stock market has an instant recovery to the moon, which I also think is unlikely. But with this current bullish pressure that we're seeing in the S&P, right? Looking at this daily chart, we've had some rapid moves up. Bitcoin's kind of lagging, trying to catch up right now. If the S&P pumps up, right, and gives us a little bit more bullish action before maybe coming back down for a correction, well, yeah, Bitcoin could be looking to test our downward sloping resistance, right? So that's the kind of action that I'm looking for. Of course, we'll see how things develop. We'll see what happens when we get there, if we get there to this downward sloping resistance line. But I do think it's likely to get some standard market action, right? That kind of a standard rally in a bear market, right? Bear market rallies are usually quite violent to the upside, uh, but ultimately it leads to sideways action, no significant change in price. That is usually how a bear market goes. And now I'm looking at Bitcoin on the weekly chart and I have the RSI pulled up here. And this is something that's quite interesting in these Bitcoin bull markets, how we have these formations that take place where the RSI kind of wedges into a point and gets down to that oversold level at 30, right? This is the 2013, sorry, 2015 bear market low right there. We hit that 30 level on the weekly RSI, come over here to the next bear market. Um, Bitcoin does in fact touch that 30 level on the weekly RSI. Look at that right there. And currently we have the same exact type of formation with that downward sloping resistance on the weekly RSI kind of wedging in, which could give us a little bit of a lift here. Let me zoom in. As, as we did in those previous ones, when we had that touch off the bottom line, we get that lift up, come back to tap that 30 before the next bull run begins. Same thing happens in 2018, come down to the low, tap that top resistance, come back, finally finish there at 30 before the bull market begins or the recovery begins. And it's quite possible that Bitcoin now would come up to that line, tap it, have one final dip, you know, tap that 30 line, and then we look for that full recovery. So that's the kind of action that I'm talking about. And that's what's leading me to, to draw this depiction. One final pump up to test resistance, final dip, and then recovery, ultimately. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. So, you know, it is a good rate, uh, a range to trade. Uh, we're talking about Bitcoin coming up, you know, maybe as high as 20% or a little over 20% maybe coming back down another 30% and then ultimately recovering for the long term. You know, that kind of action is what I find to be the most likely. But, you know, that does also depend on the stock market. We're going to have to see. Are we going to get some kind of quick recovery here? Or is the S&P also going to be trading sideways, sort of mimicking, you know, Bitcoin sort of mimicking that kind of action? 
that we're gonna have to wait and see that we don't know yet but i do think that we might have a bullish um relief rally ahead of us a bear market rally right so that's the kind of thing i'm looking for hope you guys enjoyed this video smash the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll talk to you guys soon mm -hmm.